golfer, and uh, we were talking about starting golf as a adding golf to our curriculum in the near future. So we thought this would be a good way to kick it off and have to get a lot of ideas. So I'm going to turn it over. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> Can I take this off while I do this from over here? Sure, yeah. Okay. Woo. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Um, so, my name is Craig Hawknoin, and uh, like Eric said, I am a professional golfer. I was trying to qualify for a tour event, uh, what was that, yesterday, <laughs> Monday. I didn't make it into the tournament, um, but that's fun because I get to be here with you guys now. Um, I've been to probably most everybody's school in this room at some point doing like an after-school golf program. So in the Gilbert, Queen Creek, Higley School Districts, I did after-school golf. There's currently, I think, a group doing it now. Uh, I started 10, 15 years ago is when I was doing it in after-school. So um, <clears throat> has anybody witnessed that or watched it or heard about it or had their kids do it? Um, what's your feedback on, on that type of program? What do you, what, what's your gut reaction right away when you, when you hear that they're a golfer or a golf pro or a college kid or a high school kid or somebody like that was hired to come out and do some golf at your school? What's your, what's your impression, your gut reaction? Thumbs up? Yeah. Um, so that's good to hear. Um, obviously, on that side of it, on the other side of it, I always worry that in some cases I'm kind of stepping on the, the PE teacher's toes or um, doing something that's going to that's gonna possibly, you know, um, take away from something that you're doing. As a, as a kid growing up, PE teachers were always my heroes. I wanted to be a PE teacher when I grew up, and so my degree is in physical education as well, but... I didn't go the teacher route, I went more of the therapy route. So physical education, recreation uh, is kind of the way I went. So um, <clears throat> golf is what I've always done ever since I was a little kid. And there's a lot of traditional ways that golf is taught. And you can imagine, has anybody in here had golf lessons before? Okay, so you care to share what that experience was like? What happened? What was your first day? What do you remember? <laughs> Good. <clears throat> so she can throw the ball further than she can hit it. Um, a lot of times that experience isn't fun, to be honest, right? Uh, it's frustrating. A lot of times you get sunburned. You know, if you're a little kid, sometimes you sit down on the grass, you get bit by an ant or something like that. Um, a lot, maybe sometimes you're not wearing the right shoes. Um, I, I, as a coach at golf courses, I would have parents bring kids all the time in their flip-flops or sandals or whatever it is. And inevitably, they would stub their toe or something like that. And as you know, with those elementary kids, especially the real little ones, you spend more time kind of corralling, you know, rubbing out boo-boos and consoling and all that kind of stuff. And you don't really get on to the golf part. And then I think what where that really large frustration gap comes in is when the coach, who's a golfer, is not a PE teacher, is not a parent a lot of times yet, um, they're like, what do I do? Like, I'm not really trained for this. I can't really handle these little kids. And so to me, uh, when Eric asked me to come and share a little bit about golf to PE teachers, I got really excited because <clears throat> my passion is the game of golf, and I'm trying to grow the game of golf, and I want more people playing. And the game of golf has boomed just during COVID because a lot of times parents were looking for things to do and t-ball and softball and football and all these team sports were kind of canceled, whereas golf being outdoors was, it was almost like, hey, we'll, we'll let golf go pretty freely without much restriction. So the golf industry as a whole had a big boom. So I think that's really exciting, and I think it's exciting that you're interested in kind of adding that to what you're doing in PE. And maybe all I can do is share a little bit about my experience and then share some cool tricks and tools and equipment maybe you haven't seen before. Um, I'm familiar with Gopher. I know that, you know, whatever budget you have for golf, you can buy some stuff. Maybe there's some ideas that I can give you in this uh, in-service that will help you along the way. So feel free at any moment. Raise your hand, ask a question. Um, how we, what, what time is it right now, Eric, where are we at? 
what is it? 145. 145. So we're planning on wrapping up around 3 o'clock, I think. Um, ask questions as we go at any point. So like I was saying, um, golf can be boring, right? Golf can be, you know, especially when you compare it to the other sports. If you've got volleyball, you've got everybody out on the court. You've got soccer, everybody's running around kicking. And a lot of times with golf, it, you're just by yourself. So uh, do we have any really avid golfers in the room, people that play? Okay, so what would be a reason why Why do you think you like golf? Challenge. The challenge, right? Yeah, yeah, right? So when I have a, a student, especially an adult learner, and I say, what's your main reason for playing this game of golf? Because I have to stick with the why for them, right? Just like we you know, would do in our own lives. It's socialization. I want to be with my friends. It, you know, if it's a spouse, I want to be with my spouse. Um, I feel like it's a great lifelong sport as an adult. I want to learn so I can kind of get my kids involved in it. And the one thing I found as a golf coach is when I um, go into a classroom and do a, a training with kids, and I ask the, the kids and the parents typically show up for like our first introductory class. And if the parents have kids that are under the age of 12, I'll ask them uh, in the room, how many parents in here play golf? And almost nobody raises their hands for kids that are under the age of 12. And then if I have another age group from, say, 13 to 17, and I ask those parents who plays golf, almost every single one of them raises their hand. So what I found with the game of golf is it takes time. Right? It takes time. It is challenging. It's an investment. There's money that you need to spend on practicing and utilizing the facility. It's not like you can just go out to the park behind your house at the green belt because most of the time, there's a big, huge sign up there that says no golf allowed, right? Because they don't want somebody hitting a real golf ball into somebody's backyard and breaking a window. But what that tells me is that when that parent and that family become a golfing family, they basically carry that on all the way. And a lot of times then that kid is playing on the high school team, maybe even going on and playing college. And if they're not playing at a high level, they're at least learning the game of golf and they're progressing to the point where it's going to help them at some point in their future, right? How many people in the room have been invited to just play a charity scramble, right? That's probably a lot of people have been invited to play. And then you're like, I don't know. Do I go? Whose clubs do I borrow? Do I just go down to the garage sale and grab some clubs and, and try to hit? Um, and so the, the, act, the whole environment of golf can be very daunting, right? So you go to a golf course, you've got a driving range, you've got a clubhouse, there's all kinds of stuff that you don't, you're a complete fish out of water, right? That's where I think being go doing golf in the schools with the PE teachers is such a home run for golf in general and for these kids. Um, Golf teaches so many great life lessons. Golf is challenging, but golf teaches patience. Um, at a grassroots level, it really helps to develop hand-eye coordination. And you can play golf, essentially, the way we're going to play it today. You can play golf much sooner that you can, than you can play a lot of other sports, right? And that's the way we're going to do it. So if you think about, um, you know, 500 years ago, you've got a, you've got a, a shepherd out in the field of Scotland. He's got his shepherd's crook and he's wearing his kilt and he's walking along and then he takes his wooden shepherd's crook and he sees a sheep's pellet and he just kind of goes like that. And he hits the sheep's pellet and it flies a a through the air a little bit, rolls along the ground, and maybe it goes up next to a tree and then he turns to his other shepherd buddy and says, I bet I can do that better than you. <laughs> right? So that's basically how golf, in my mind, started. And then it turned into like a shepherd's crook, a stick and a ball, a, ship, uh, a stick and a sheep's pellet. And then it turned into, well, maybe there's a gopher hole. And then you not, you not only do you hit that rock over that way, but if you drop it in that hole and you do it in less times than I did, then you won, right? Then that's golf. So then the first courses were only six holes, three holes. Right? This is basically taking a stick whacking a ball and getting it from point A to point B. So that's golf, really. That's all it is. And 
when I said that the child can learn the game of golf really much faster, if you take a plastic bat like this and then you take a soccer ball and then you go out, I've taught at this school and after school and these, this area has some beautiful trees, some nice shade, it's got some mounds, it's got you know high places to low places, it's got some fences. If all you did is take essentially a stick and a ball and whack it around the place, and you can kind of do it like an obstacle course, right? A golf course is an obstacle course. You're going around water, over bunkers, through trees. That's all it is. And you don't even have to, you don't even, did you say spend more time in the trees? <laughs> yeah, right? And that's the beauty of it, right? There's so much cool stuff out there. So I think as um, as an adult, as a teacher, what a fantastic thing to introduce these kids to. When I was that small, there were 10 or 12 of us at this golf course that my parents would drop us off at. And we, we were there every day after school, and we were there all summer long. They'd drop us off. They'd give me, I'm from Australia, so they'd give us $5 and uh, give me five five dollars and say go uh, after golf go over to the Chinese shop get yourself some chicken noodles and a chocolate milk <laughs> and that's what I would do and when I was little I would go to the golf course and I can tell you that out of the 12 kids that were six seven eight years old when we started every single one of them became a golf pro right so they we were immersed in the sport it was something that we did so to me if you look at just that demographic, it's not like all of a sudden there was something special in the water and we all had exceptional hand-eye coordination, et cetera, et cetera. It's not that at all. It's just time, right? When you take a stick and you bend over because the ball's on the ground and you just whack it and it rolls somewhere and you do that with smaller targets where you go from a big ball to a foam ball, tennis ball, to a, a foam baseball to you know, an actual tennis ball, to a tiny tennis ball, and then smaller foam balls, and then you make, you change the shape of the stick, and you change it from something really lightweight and easy to something that's a little bit more heavy and challenging. All you're doing is leveling that kid through that, through those stages, and then what that does is that opens up so many more lessons. And I remember out here with the kids going hitting shots and playing an actual course around the field and having frustrated kids, having them not wanting to be out there. They don't want to hit that shot. You know, it was an after school program, so it turned into another hour and a half or whatever of babysitting. It was childcare and it was exposure to golf. And we were out there, but as a golfer, I wanted them, I wanted the kids to excel. I wanted them to do well at it. I just didn't want to just babysit. So what that drove me to do is to develop a training tool, and that's why this big Sabre Golf banner is out here, is because I invented a training tool that would help kids learn the actual skill of the golf swing better. Right? And it teaches adults, it teaches kids, it teaches everybody the skill. So to me, when I look at this, there's three categories that I want you to basically take away from this. One is just athletic development, right? just movement. You're moving, you're taking a stick, you're whacking a ball. Uh, one of the great exercises that I like to do is frisbee. Okay, So as a right-handed golfer, and, and as we know, you don't know if these kids are going to play this game right-handed or left-handed yet. Um, I know I play better right-handed, but I can also play left-handed. So if I, as a right-handed golfer, I, if I take my frisbee and I throw it left-handed, this direction. Now that's training my left arm, kind of like a golf swing, to go in this direction. If I take a ball and instead of throwing it overhand or underhand, if I kind of learn to throw it sidearm, that's going to help me with that right-handed motion of a golf swing. An old school pro would say, <clears throat> take a rock, go to the lake, and skip that rock across the lake, right? So you can see that motion that I'm making is a kind of a sidearm motion skipping that rock. So if you take a ball and kind of sidearm throw it, set up a tunnel like this, have your kids stand there and try to throw the ball 
through the tunnel all the way through. Have them take a Frisbee in their left hand and throw it. And then have them do both at the same time. Right? Frisbee and ball. And, you know, however you want to set it up, I'm not telling you how to teach. You're already great teachers. This is how I would do it. And then if you have them just switch, say, okay, I'm going to take it right-handed and we're going to go backhanded. Then we're going to skip it. We're going to throw it sidearm left-handed. And then you're going to start to see, oh, actually this kid has a, a greater chance of doing this from, which would be the left-handed golf swing or the right-handed swing, right? So there's just athletic development, whether it's throwing, kicking, jumping, running, all that kind of stuff that you already do. And then taking a bat, and instead of throwing a ball, like, like softball, or putting it on a tee like tee ball, just put the ball right on the ground and hit it, right? So you can, you can essentially set up your diamonds to go play kickball. And instead of having the kids kick the ball, give them a bat and a soccer ball and tell them to hit that ball, right? The only thing you have to watch for is when they get excited, just like that, they take the ball and they, and they throw the bat or something. So you, you're obviously well skilled at safety control there, but that's golf, right? So if we're making it fun, we're taking it from just athletic development. The second one is gameplay. So one thing that really uh, is difficult for me as a golf coach and as, as a parent and as a young golfer growing up to adult, the boring part, that's a huge obstacle for the game of golf, right? So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to play a game, and then we're going to also use the Sabres to kind of understand some skill development, which is the third piece. So I have a junior golfer. He's 14 years old. He started when he was little. He turned to me just about a week ago in the golf cart where I was giving him a lesson. And he said, I think golf is fun. I love playing golf. But I love playing golf more when I play better. Right? And so he's 14. He's thinking, I'm going to go from playing at high school level to college level, etc. And so we all know if we do anything just a little bit better, we're going to enjoy it that much more, right? So here's what I would hope, is that using the tools, using the Sabre training tools, if you're using those in your school environment, those little kids are going to develop really athletic, natural, fluid golf swings. And you're going to see that today. So who's my, who's my brand new golfers who's never really swung a club or rarely ever swung a club? Anybody in here? <laughs> Okay, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean on those that have never really done this before just to kind of get an understanding of how the saber works to work on the golf swing, right? And we may pull you. Is this who, who we're picking on right here? What's, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan with an R or B? R. R, Ryan. Okay, cool. So we're going to pick on Ryan later. So we've got athletic development, kicking, throwing, hitting. We've got skill development, which is going to be the saber, and then we've got gameplay. And the way I like to think about it is the athletic part, that's the physical body part. That's literal balance. That's some forms of coordination. There's the gameplay part, which is more like hitting that athlete in their heart, like making them have joy, making them have fun. And what I would love is for all the kids that experience any kind of golf at a school environment is that when they... Next time they get asked, hey, do you want to go play golf? They think, golf, I love golf. We did that in PE. It's awesome. I love it. And what you're going to see is we're not playing anything close to necessarily traditional golf. But that's super important to me because if you did a traditional golf class and we strung up some netting, got some turf in here, and we hit real golf balls, those kids are going to be bored and they're not going to enjoy it. Next time their parent or they get an opportunity to play golf, they're going to say, no, I don't want to do golf. It's boring, right? So those are the three parts. Think about it as like mind, body, soul kind of deal. The soul level is like, oh, the joy that you get from playing a game and just game play. Skill part is the mind. Oh, I'm actually playing better, and I enjoy that because I'm actually learning a proper skill. And then the body part is where, hey, I'm just... I'm just getting stronger, I'm running faster, I'm moving, throwing, that kind of stuff. 
So, I'm going to run through just a few just brainstorming things, and then we're going to get into a game and the saber. So what I've got here, is anybody familiar with SNAG? Has anybody seen SNAG stuff before? So SNAG, the initial, starts, uh, uh, is an acronym for Starting New at Golf. Okay, so SNAG came out, I don't know, 20 years ago or more. And it was kind of cool how it all came to be, but SNAG itself, um, really to me, most people remember it as the ball kind of, snags to the velcro right so the basic premise behind the kits were that you could train it indoors outdoors with velcro type tennis balls and they would stick to targets so i've got a lot of snag stuff because 10 15 years ago when i first did after school golf this was just a fun thing to do i would suit up one of my staff or an intern or somebody like that in the sticky suit that's what that's called put on the helmet Unfortunately, as the as the tennis balls, <laughs> you know, as the tennis balls got a little bit smaller, occasionally they would pop through. <laughs> um, so Ryan, you'll definitely need a helmet. Um, you know, the oversized clubs was basically one of their other pieces, and so when you had a, a tennis ball and an oversized club, the tennis balls actually have little arrows on them. So in an indoor environment, you would have a launcher, that's what this is called, and you would have a launch pad. You must have been playing golf, <laughs> right? So you put the ball with the line going down the arrow, you take your launcher with your bullseye on the club face, and then you swing and you hit off your launch pad and you send your ball to a sticky target or at a coach wearing a sticky suit, right? And this was designed to try to protect the floor. These big plastic clubs don't really do a ton of damage anyway, but that was the idea. Let's give a mat, let's give a way to aim, do some alignment. So the kits would come with different length clubs. So this launcher is obviously a lot bigger than this little launcher right here. And so you had one club that's a launcher and then you had another club that's a roller. And this roller would go to that sticky target with points on it. You would set up a starting point, roll your ball along the ground, and stick it against a target, right? So it's gameplay, big plastic club. So Gopher has some stuff in there. I believe this technology was probably patented, and then it patent expired. I just noticed... Um, a couple days ago, the first T program has partnered with the PGA Tour. And you actually buy clubs that look just like this at Walmart now. Um, I understand the companies are doing a lot of changing hands, etc. If you need to source this kind of stuff, if you want to get some of it, let me know. And I, I do have a contact that's kind of in close with the moving parts of what's going on there. Um, Eric has my information, and I can help you source it. Um, Gopher has some stuff I would say is maybe not as good as this because it's not like golf specific. Sometimes it's kind of like a combo golf club slash like um, gym hockey or something like that. So this uh, this equipment's really cool. Um, you can progress like they have this little deal. It's called a snapper. So when you swing, um, they've got colors on here for a right-handed golfer, like left on yellow, right on red pull it and snap it so if I'm swinging it creates that crack of the whip right so it's fun this little deal is called the snag a zoo right so you set it up here you kind of go up make your right um, I as a as a golf pro love like a little tiny little double-sided um, putters right because you don't know are they going to gravitate more to right-handed or left-handed and at this age I wouldn't get caught up in worrying about whether they gripped it 100% correctly um, although when we get into my training tool you're going to see there's a, a benefit to that uh, these discs right here you can set for indoor use like um, if we had a really hot afternoon or a a rainy day or something like that in after school we'd go come inside and find a place to to do this and so you have these discs 
where you can putt on the carpet down the halls, try to putt into the discs. This little deal here helps kids with their training too. You set it on the flat side. This is a putting ruler. So you put a ball here, you take out a putter and try to putt it and roll it down the ruler. You're gonna hit it firmer than that, but you're gonna try to roll it down the ruler. If they need some confidence or Ryan needs some confidence, you basically flip it over on this side and there's a channel right in here. It's like bumpers for, for bowling. You can put it on here. There you go, Ryan. Let's see. Straight down there. <laughs> here, throw that back. Right down the ruler. And then these, these little mats, you can set them out as targets. So you can set up a, a full-size like white target, flip it over, or flip it over this side so you can put it on the ground and have the kids try to get a tennis ball or something like that to just kind of roll right over the target. It just gives you something flat and easy that you can put in there. They're more advanced kids. I use these out in the golf course by the chipping green. We'll throw them on the putting green. Uh, the reason why they're made out of this material is because when the ball hits this, it reacts like a putting green. So it reacts like landing it on a putting green. So if a, a teenager, a college golfer is working on their chip shot, and they spin it a certain way and it lands on that, they're not getting some kind of like false feedback on how it hits the green. Uh, it helps them to zero in on that. Um, this, t this target here is like a sticky flag target. Uh, this little deal right here is about a $2,000 launch monitor. So at some point, if you actually did decide to set up a net, maybe this is more high school or middle school where you've got some good golfers, you could set up a, an actual practice net and hit real golf balls into it. And then what this does is it relays all of the cool information to your smartphone. So it'll tell you how fast your club swung, how fast the ball was going, how far it went, the backspin revolutions of it. Um, you can actually project this information from your smartphone onto a TV or your school's projector or whatever right there. So, I mean, you could do some cool things. Obviously, you'd want some more skilled players if you're actually hitting real golf balls and doing that kind of stuff. Um, but this is just a basic progression through all of this, just so that you can kind of brainstorm a little bit on kind of that what's available, right? And maybe you don't go with any of this stuff, but you've sp it sparked an idea that, hey, next time I do golf, it's really simple. I don't have to actually have a golf club. I can just take one of my random PE pieces of equipment and a soccer ball or volleyball or something like that, and we can go out and just kind of play an obstacle course around the entire field. We can actually start golf, right? Um, so what we're going to do, how are we doing on time? Where are we at? Okay, good. So what we're going to do is, um, oh, and this information or this station right here, we won't go through this, but I'll describe it to you. Again, we want golf to be fun, right? So if a kid, you know, you can set up your obstacle course however you want. So let's say you've got a, in this station over here, you, I, would, I would use a saber. So I'll grab a saber, set it up. So you can have... Obviously, so many hula hoops and anything you want to set up as an obstacle course. But what I would do is I would have the kids start here, pick up the ball, maybe go through the ladder. They would come over here. I would have them take this ball, kind of try to throw it through their underhand, crawl through there on their own, then come out, find the ball, put it in this space. So this is a box, right? So by the rules of golf, there is actually a T box. So most times when you go to the golf course, I'm sure everybody's seen two T markers, correct? Right? Well, there's actually a, a rule within the rules of golf that says you have to hit your ball from within. So you can't be in front of those two markers. That would be breaking the rules. You can't be outside of them. And you have two club lengths going backwards from here, one, two, to create a box, right? So 
you start by teaching the kids that there is a box that they hit out of. Now we're going to put the ball in the middle of the box. They've got a target set up here against the wall. You're going to learn this in a second. They're going to go grip, stance, bow, pop, drop, spin, set. You hear that ball? Right? Then they're going to snap the ball and hold their finish. And then you're going to have them do that once. And if they don't do it correctly, you have them go through the whole thing again. Because a lot of times the kids will get to here and just swing. And they won't set and snap. So set, set the ball, snap it through. So grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. Spin, set. And then when they snap, it just rockets right through that ball. Right? So what they're learning in this technique is that proper, efficient, athletic swing. So then they're going to, this obviously would be longer distance away. You don't want the ball flying everywhere. Then they're going to grab it, put the saber on the ground, do the same thing. You can have them put it here and kick the ball through, whatever you want to do, hula hoops, anything you want. Come out to the other side. So that's just one exercise. So you might have them doing an obstacle course with a few different kids going around and around and set up as many stations as you want to be able to do that. This station over here <coughs> is more like traditional golf. So if you think about what I explained about going from point A to point B, this is exactly what we're doing. We're taking our ball. We're starting in a box. This is hole one. So you have them take the saber, go through the whole routine. They hit it. Outdoors, probably. This would be a little bit difficult in here. And then it goes to here, here, here. They get it. They have to... They can't let their, their ball roll through the box, right? Then they have to bring it back, hitting, hitting, hitting. How many times did you hit the ball? What was your score? Okay, so that's just hole number one. So if you set up a big lap of these cones in, in little square boxes all around the field, and you want to set them up 20, 30 yards apart, 40 yards, you use the entire outdoor space, Set one in the sandbox underneath the jungle gym out there. Set one under a tree. Set one right in the middle of the field. Set one over in the corner of the fence. Has anybody played uh, disc golf or frisbee golf? Yeah, right? So just think about it just like that. Instead of taking the frisbee and going from point A to point B, you're taking a saber and a soccer ball and going from point A to point B. Or literally set up the exact same boxes and send them out there with frisbees. Right? Say, okay, you're going to go this way clockwise. You're going to throw every time with your left hand. And then you're going to go back counterclockwise and you're going to play and you're going to throw everyone with the right hand. So then you as coaches can then look at that and go, oh, you know, little Johnny is, his, he has a greater aptitude for using his right hand when it comes to doing this than his left. So like Phil Mickelson, who throws a ball right-handed, plays golf left-handed. So if they actually throw a frisbee better one side than the other, maybe they could do it the other way. If they throw a ball underhand or sidearm one way, you can, you can get them going that direction, right? Um, so that's a couple stations, a couple big pictures. I'm going to get you up on your feet, and we're going to maybe play a little game around here and use the sabers. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, plus that one, ten. So I need ten. Well, we got maybe twenty. Let's do two teams. We'll do ten and ten. So we're going to play a game that I called saber golf, but it's kind of like baseball golf. So let's divide. You know, I see some people limping. Um, but come on up here. <coughs> okay. Um, so let's let's just go right here. Ryan, you're 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 going to be the captain of you're going to be the captain of that team over there. Eric, you're going to be the captain of that team over there. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to have this team 
Actually, eight. Maybe we got a little more. Can I get two maybe jump on this team over here? Perfect. That'll work. That's pretty close, right? Okay, so what I'll have this team over here do is I'm going to have you come and gra into the middle of the circle and grab a saber for me, please. Just grab any one. Try not to hit each other yet. Is that catching everybody in there? Yeah. All right, good. All right, very good. Now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you stand in a circle and reach your sabers out so that you can kind of not hit each other. There you go. So we'll kind of go around this circle that's in here and just spread out if you can. And then this team over here, if you could come and get a um, cone and then just place it basically right in front of that one of those people and then one of the other team members and then just stand behind them for me. push these out of the way. <laughs> okay, cool. So it looks like we mostly have everybody everybody teamed up. All right, so I'm going to have the those that are standing with their saber hold the saber up like this for me, like a lightsaber. Hold it straight up and stand there facing your cone. If you're not going to participate, you're going to go sit down over there. <laughs> All right, so face, face straight into the circle right over the top of that cone. And then those of you that are assisting, you just kind of stay back a couple big paces from, <laughs> from that person swinging the stick. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the routine. So <clears throat> I didn't have enough little kid sabers, but the green one is a little kid saber right here, and it has the secret knowledge written on it. So if you could flip it around and read those words. Do you see them? Right here. Right there. Can you read that? Grip. Oh, grip. Stance. Bow. Right? So as I went through over there, obviously I've got this memorized, done it millions of times. The kids' sabers have the information written on it. So what's your name? Julie. Julie. So Julie has the information right in front of her. The sabers that you have are different sizes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find out where to, which is the heavy end of the saber for some of you and which is the light end. So just put it down, kind of waggle it back and forth. And then what I want you to do is flip it over, grab the other end, and waggle it. Because right, some sabers are bigger than others. Some of you are using adult sabers, and some are using like middle school for 12-year-olds, and then you're using you know, little kids' ones right there. So I, what I want you to do is identify the light end. So if I've got my golf club in my hand here, the heavy end would be if I have all the weight at the bottom, the light end would be right here. So I want you to make sure it feels a little bit lighter in your hands. So go ahead and hold your saber up in your air. Put your feet together. Stand to attention. All right. All right. All eyes on me. Julie, you ready? Okay. Yep. So I'm going to scan the room real quick. So I've got a slight overlapping grip. He's played a little bit before. Slight interlocking grip. She's got a 10-finger baseball grip. 10-finger baseball grip. 10-finger this is somewhat golf, right? Ten finger, but hot dog under the bun. Hot dog under the bun. Hot dog out. You're doing good, Ryan. So Ryan's more advanced, so just so you know. All right, so what we're going to do is scan the room. We need hot dog. <laughs> hot dog under the bun, right? So we, we don't want that thumb hanging out here just, you know, strictly like a baseball bat. We want hot dog under the bun, right? So I was able to do that quickly. 
So as a golf, as a PE teacher and as a golf coach, I can scan that room and go, okay, everybody's looking pretty good. That didn't take long. And then what I'm going to be able to do is identify as we go through this, maybe should you be swinging right-handed, left-handed, right? And, and who's paying attention? So feet together. Okay. All right. Julie, what's next? Stance. <laughs> All right. So stance is just shoulder width apart. Now, the easiest way I would describe stance for golf is can you jump from, from that stance, right? You're going to have some kids go, I'm stance, right? And they're going to have their feet like spread apart. You don't want a super wide stance. You don't want super narrow. So stance, right? So what's next? Bow, bow right? So it's just a little bow. So we're going to keep our eyes up, kind of looking at the grip end of the saber. We're going to leave the saber up. We're not going to lower the saber down. A little bow. What's the next one? Pop the knees, right? So what we don't want in golf, <laughs> what we don't, what we don't want in golf, is we don't want a like a, a slouch and a squat, right? We want a little bit of a bow and a pop, right? And as a golfer, you're 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 being perfectly trained to be the best golfer you could ever be right now, right? So a little pop, right? Now what's the next one? Drop. Drop. So that's when you drop that saber down. There's a ball in there. You heard it, so the ball is also dropping. What's the next one? Okay, so spin. So I don't really care if you spin to the right or to the left, but the way you're going to do that is make sure you leave your feet on the ground. You're going to spin and lift that saber up in the air. All right now, everybody's pause, so I can scan the room and I can see. Yep, everybody's got that saber in the right position. What's the next one? Set. set. That's set. Okay. Now I'm going to come along and I'm going to look and say, okay, look. So here's something really cool to point out. Go ahead and go back up there, set, right? He's played a little bit of golf. His arm's a little stiffer. His arm's a little stiffer. A lot of people are taught right from the beginning, straighten that left arm. I'm going to tell you that's false right now, okay? A lot of golf information gets passed down from golfer to golfer, and it's not as powerful as a bent left arm. And you can see everybody else did a bent left arm because that's just natural, so I don't want the kids to be thinking, okay, stiff left arm, because just because that's what we were taught, right? So bent left arm. What's the next one? Snap. So go ahead and snap it and hold it. Okay. So now the location of that snap, you can rest. The location of that snap should be basically kind of at the bottom of the swing. So we're going to go through it again a little more quickly. So you can, we'll go at Julie's pace, whatever she says. Ready? All right, feet together, stand at attention, scan the room. Nope, right in front of you. There you go. Very good, Julie. Grip. Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Spin. Set. Snap. <laughs> Hold. Okay. All right, very good. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to play a game of Coach Says. Are we ready? Okay. Yes. Grip. Grip. Coach didn't say. Oh. All right, so it's like Simon Says, like Simon Says, right? Yes. Coach says grip. Coach says stance. Bow. Who did I get? Oh, Julie. <laughs> okay, start over. Start over. All right, Coach says grip. Coach says stance. Coach says bow. Pop. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go through this just one time, and then we're going to switch for our partners so they can they can be made fun of too. All right. Ready? Grip. Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Spin. Set. Listen for that ball, right? Snap. Hold. Very good. Right, so it's rewarding in a sense that you hear the ball click, you're understanding movement, you're training your swing. Next time you guys go to the driving range or you go to actually play a game of golf, if you follow this procedure, whether you have a saber or not, you're going to be better. Right? It's just the, way, just the way it goes. I'm obviously very proud that I invented something that helps people understand all this moving stuff. But it, it's, it's like a no-brainer. When I do a beginner golf class or a kid's golf class, when they go through these steps, they fundamentally, they just learn it. 
So we're going to switch. So switch out with your partner. <laughs> yeah, see if you can waggle it. See if you can identify which is the heavy end and the light end. Um, some of them just have that information just written on there. So if you look down at the stripe, you'll see it says light and heavy. On the blue stripe, you'll see heavy swish, light snap, right? So we want to be holding. If you're reading right here, down by your thumb and your fingers, you want to be reading light snap, right? So go ahead and hold it up in the air. I'm going to trade. Okay. I think you like aqua better. Okay. All right. So checking grips, scanning the room, right? Hot dog in a bun. Okay. You guys are quick learners. Very good. Okay. So feet together. Grip. So now I want you to shout it back to me. Grip. grip. Come on now. Grip. Grip. Stance. Stance. Bow. Bow. Pop. Pop. Drop. Drop. Spin. Spin. Set. set. All right, I heard them all set. Snap. Snap. Hold. Hold. Okay. Very good. Now let's do it again. Grip. Grip. Feet together. Stand at attention. Sabers in the air. Grip. Grip. Stance. Grip. Bow. Bow. Pop. Pop. Drop. Drop. Spin. Spin. Set. Snap. Snap. Hold. Did you hear it set? Think. Yeah. So when you go too far, the ball will roll past the set position, right? So do demonstrate, go in your backswing. If he goes back here, that ball was at the end. It stayed in the end, and it came all the way to here. So he has to hold it up in a vertical position so that the ball actually sets in his hands right here. So what happens, especially with kids, length of swing is not necessarily something that's going to make the golfer play better. Like, you should shorten your swing to play better. Not necessarily. The reason why you shorten the swing is because you have mass at this end of the club. If you bring the mass over your back, a lot of times it's heavy. And then to snap it, you have to like heave the mass back over your shoulder and it creates bad form and bad technique. And it's harder. So if you hold the mass more straight up in the air and you set in your hands, you don't have as much force to kind of push it out to snap it through. All right. So let's go through that again. Grip. Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Spin. Set. Snap, hold. Okay, now we're going to flip our hands. We're going to do it lefty or righty. We're going to do the opposite. So flip your hands around. The other hot dog under the other bun. Okay, feet together. Grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. Now you're going to spin to the opposite side. Spin, set, snap. Hold. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so what, what, what you're going to want to do next time you go play golf is you're going to want to do some lefty swings if you're a righty and vice versa. Because what happens is you get this bad muscle development and this uh, over muscle development on one side of your body that eventually causes injury, stresses, or strains, right? So if you actually do a bunch of warm-up swings the opposite direction, and you get the mass of your club or your saber swinging through and pulling you to the other side, that's going to help you. Okay. One last tip. When I'm working with beginners and kids, it is very, very important that we keep our head still and our feet still. Okay. So when you think of consistency, consistency is probably the most frustrating part of the game of golf, right? How can I hit one great shot one time and then horrible the next? Consistency or lack of consistency a lot of times comes from twinkle toes kind of movement, ballet movement, right, where we get up on our toes. It seems like that's what good golfers do, but it creates a lot of inconsistency until you have that swing developed, right? So we're going to do this again, but as we do it, I want your head to feel like it stays relatively still and keep both feet planted even if 
when you go through, you're going to be just like this on the other side, feet on the ground. Ready? All right, grip. Feet together. You go whichever way you want, whichever way you want. <coughs> At this point, you could identify, hey, Susie, or where's Julie go? Julie, you should be, you should be swinging the, the other way. All right, we're going to try it the other way. Um, I have three boys. One started righty, stayed righty. One started lefty, I switched him to righty. And then the other one started lefty and stayed lefty. And the lefty that switched, his lefty golf swing was really high up and on his toe like this on the back swing. And then his follow through, he would hit and come down like this. So I said, no, let's just go here, righty, so that you can finish up here for lefty. And it changed. He gave me a lot of pushback on it, but it worked, right? So switch them as soon as you can kind of identify some of those things. All right, so one more go around grip. Stance, bow, pop, drop, spin, set, all right, double check, make sure everybody's set, snap, hold, all right, okay, very good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit of a game, okay, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll take all the sabers, everybody that has a saber, I'm going to have you line up in a line, underneath this uh, basketball goal from this black line that way. And everybody who does not have a saber, you're fielders, so you're going to stand out here. Okay, just outside the circle that we created. Can you do the rest of the presentation with your awesome obvious? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is, where's that little, you have the green one? Yeah. So this will be the one that we, we use. So then what I'll just have you do is take your saber and just lay it over here on this line over here. Yeah, everybody else's. <coughs> right? So the, basically the game that we're going to play is kind of like a baseball type game. Um, we're not going to, you know, play super serious, but it could get serious. Who knows? Um, basically the game is you're going to... This team is the batting team. They're going to hit a ball. And you can hit it in any direction, right? So in theory, you could hit it out that door. You could hit it over there if you wanted to. The big reveal, however, is when that batter or golfer is setting up, they have an opportunity to aim. Okay, so what's your name? Karen. Karen. So if Karen says, I'm going to go through the routine... Grip, stance, bow, pops, drop, right? Get to this point. And then you see Karen's eyes go over here. And then you see Karen kind of shuffle around like this. Karen gets to hit that ball wherever she wants. <coughs> to stop Karen from running the bases, or basically running the entire circumference of this circle, right? To stop her from doing that, you have to have a, any of the fielders get the ball, and once that fielder gets inside this circle with the ball, she stops. Now you can work as a team. You can throw the ball to each other. But the main thing is, once you get the ball, once you get inside that circle, Karen stops going over here. So you ready? All right, Karen's at... So yeah, when... when, when if, I, if I get my coach's whistle, or if I tell Karen, stop, freeze, wherever you got to, that's where you freeze. Basically, you freeze at that cone when that person gets to the center of the circle. You ready? <coughs> All right, grip. So as a coach, you're still in control. You're controlling safety. You're making sure that little Eric, back up Eric, you're in the hitting zone over here. All right, grip. <coughs> grip, stance, bow. Pop, drop, okay, now Karen can aim, spin, okay, set, snap, and then you're going to run the base. There you go. <laughs> Don't hit my camera. Okay, nice. Okay. Oh, out the hallway. 
Throw it in. Okay, you're right there. Okay, Eric's up. Yeah, you make it up as you go along. I mean, uh, <coughs> you can do runs. You know, the, I don't know how much the kids really pay attention to how many points they have. They like to know if they won or not, but um, you can basically say, oh, yeah, blue team won. <laughs> and, right? All right, so grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. Okay, this is where you aim. Spin, <laughs> set, <laughs> snap. Okay, run your bases. Oh, overthrow. Okay, freeze. Okay, that's where you are. All right. <coughs> What's your name? Aaron. Okay, Aaron's turn. So what you would do, obviously, for safety, make sure your cones are, like, spread out so nobody gets hit too close. But the idea is that outside... <coughs> This circle is massive, right? So the reason why I make this circle and I don't allow the kids to field inside the circle is because that ball can come off at a decent speed, right? It's mostly rolling and mostly it's, I use these foam softballs, not necessarily a, you know, a reactive soccer ball or a volleyball. Something that's more s softer and foam-like. So make sure you hit that way this time. These cheeky guys that keep hitting in these corners. All right. All right. Ready? Grip. Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Okay, you can aim. All right, spin. Set. Snap. Okay, run. Freeze. Okay, good. Right? So as you can imagine with your kids, they're probably not organized and throwing to somebody. Right? They're essentially running, and with a massive circle, the ball got somewhere, and then they're going to pick it up, and whoever gets it is probably going to be the one that's like running all the way to try to get to the middle of the circle. Right? They're not going to be fielding necessarily. All right, grip, stance, bow, pop, drop, spin, set, snap. Hold. <coughs> All right, freeze. Okay, very good. All right, let's go through this again. All right. Grip. Feet together. Grip, stance, bow, pop, drop, spin, set, snap. Oh, there you go. Nice. Freeze. Okay. <laughs> All right, who's next? <coughs> Lefty. All right. All right, grip. Feet together, saber in front. Grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. Okay, this is where you get to aim. All right, and it is kind of, it's super cute, right? The kids are aiming. They're thinking, I'm going to catch that team off guard. And whether they hit it straight or not, that ball could squirt any direction, so it doesn't really matter, right? Spin, set, snap, and run. Freeze. Very good. Okay, who's next? <laughs> All right. Grip. <laughs> Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Aim. Set, snap, run. Oh, 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 freeze. Do you have anyone else? One or two more? You could do whatever you, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Grip. Okay, hot dog in a bun. Okay, very good. Stance. Bow. Pop. Drop. Okay, start over, start over. <laughs> Grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. Okay, shuffle over, penguin shuffle. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Katie, what's her name? Okay. All right, last one. All right. Okay, ready? 
All right, grip. <laughs> what's time? What's the time? Okay, grip. Okay, you're gonna go backhanded. You switch your hands. Which way you want to do it? <laughs> okay, grip. Stance. Bow. <laughs> Pop. Drop. Spin. <laughs> Set. Snap. And run. Oh, it's going for the bathroom. <laughs> oh, it's a fiasco. Freeze. Okay. All right, very good, very good, very good. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, obviously, when, you know, there's so many different things that, that you can do. Um, I definitely am not the best at, like, organizing the games and keeping points and doing that kind of stuff. You guys are great at doing that kind of stuff. I just want to make sure that in this environment there's safety. It's controlled. That mantra, that, that whole routine is being done over and over and over again so that you continue to remember, so that the kids continue to remember some semblance of a swing, right? So come on back in here. You can have a seat back in over there. <clears throat> Think of a couple of questions that you might have as you as you make your way back over there. <laughs> yeah, good question. I'll uh, I'll bring this saber over here and do the words. <clears throat> All right. So I got my first question because as you, many of you probably noticed, when you were kind of checking out the saber, there may have been some other words, right? <coughs> like ball, chip, pitch, iron, and wood, okay? So this is designed in levels. So I've got the kid's saber because at this point, I'm not necessarily coaching a little kid on what's the difference between a chip shot, a pitch shot, an iron swing, or a wood swing, right? And mostly what that is is for setup. So I have the routine on here. So this is the Sabre Golf Trainer Kids. It's green. The next one up is called Sabre Golf Kids Trainer 1.0. The 1.0 is just a little bit bigger. It's, I don't, I think it's that one over there with the green and the pink, but I've, I've changed that color to red. So the red one sits just a little bit higher, and it also has the information written on it. So for a bigger kid or an older classroom, um, I definitely use that for my beginner adult classes as well. You're going to go through that routine, and that's what's going to become ingrained. And then for me as a coach, what happens is that student is buying these off my website. They're learning the routine. They're learning the procedure, and they're doing it every single time they go to the driving range. And then when they grab an actual golf club, they continue to follow that procedure. So once they've essentially learned that entire routine, which I'm pretty sure we did it 10 times only, I'm pretty sure everybody's got it mostly memorized or close to it, right? You can just kind of remember it. And when you're chanting and shouting it out and all the kids are shouting it back to you, it's really pretty simple then. What I do is I say, <coughs> all right, read it. You're following along. Now flip it to the green side is facing you. So now you can't read it anymore. Let's commit that to that process to memory, right? And then I'll have little Eric. Eric, you shout it out. Use that big boy voice. Shout it out as loud as you can, right? Okay, let's lead. You're the leader. You know, you're the leader of the class. Let's go through it all. And so put put every little kid on stage for a minute. Give them a chance. Put them in the middle of the circle. Some of them are super excited to be there. Other ones are more shy. They don't necessarily want to be there. Your judgment on how you proceed, you know, getting them involved or, or, or keeping them quiet, doesn't matter. You know them better than they probably know themselves, right, as a, as a coach. So it's built in on the saber to read. And then the bigger one is for bigger kids. And then what happens is then when you go to a, a larger one, I'll show you that next step. So that was the question, right? So why does it say this other stuff on here? Well, at some point you've essentially memorized that whole routine. Now you're going to use the saber as an alignment tool. So at this point you've moved past just swinging the saber at home in your living room or your backyard. Now you're taking your saber to the driving range to actually hit golf balls with it. 
So what you're going to do is take your golf ball, and right here on the saber it has the word ball, right? You take your ball, put it on this side of the saber in alignment with that. And if you were an adult purchasing this on my website, you have 42 videos on how to use the saber and how to do all this stuff. So to develop your own golf swing. But basically what you're going to do is put the ball right where it says ball. You're going to take your lead foot, in my case my left foot as a right-handed golfer, I'm going to put it in this grip section. Now, if I was going to do a tiny little chip, I just read right there, it says chip. So I put my right toe where it says chip. That's where I'm going to chip from, a more narrow stance. The next one says pitch. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit wider stance. But I'm going to leave my ball and my heel, my foot, in the same position. So then I'm going to take iron and then wood. So Jack Nicholas and Ben Hogan prescribed to a single ball position setup process. So the ball basically stays kind of inside the lead hip, right? So if you think about baseball or softball, you know, when you're planting that foot and you're coming through and you're kind of hitting, everything kind of pivots in and around kind of that inside of that left pocket, right? That first belt loop typically. So left foot here. That's why the ball is positioned kind of inside that left foot. And then when you're doing little shots to big shots, your stance gets wider for more power, but you don't change the position of the ball, right? Um, that's why that's written on those. It's a more advanced saber. It still has the same heavy end. Or oh, actually, I should clarify. The kids' ones, you're not training for power and strength. So the kids' ones are lighter and they are the same weight across. These ones have a much heavier weight in one end and a lighter weight in the other. So when you're working on strength and just fluidity of swing motion, you've got the heavy end. So if you grab the saber and read where it says heavy, then you're swinging the heavy end and it says heavy swish. Because you can just hear that swish of the sound. And then obviously, do it faster to create more speed. That's more like strength training. Then when you flip it over, all the weight is now essentially in your hands so that now you're holding the weight here. There's less levered weight at that end, so now you can work on the speed part. So then when you set the ball and you click it through and you're working on the snap sound, you're working on the speed. So the information that's written on there helps you with setup. There's some other dots on them as well. You lay them on the ground. And you can kind of work on putting length, stroke, that kind of stuff. So I created this product in like 2016. Took it to the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando, which is a worldwide show. There's, I don't know how many, probably a couple hundred thousand or more people that go to this big trade show. And I won best new product at the show for the Sabre, right? So, cheers. So, to have a product that I developed was one thing, and now, you know, four years later, to have a product out all around the world, actually, without return. I, I never had somebody say, I bought this at 2 a.m., I thought it would help my golf swing, <laughs> so it, it sucks, I, you know, I hate this thing, um, I want my money back, that's never happened, nobody's ever returned one for broken or whatever, so that's what I'm most proud of, is I've got a product that's out there helping people play golf. It's not breaking, it's not, you know, people aren't returning it because they're unsatisfied with it. So I feel like, especially when you have a, a little one like this for the kids, that's that skill development piece of that puzzle, right? We just had fun. We played games. We learned who's who we shouldn't trust, like with trying to hit the ball in the, in the, out the doors and whatnot. <laughs> who's a little more cheeky than, than, than the other, um, right? We also learned a little bit of, you know, team competition. We learned some fun. You know, that's that, that heart level, just gameplay part of it. So if you essentially played golf, in air quotes, and then your little kid and someone says, hey, you want to go play golf? Well, this is kind of what they're thinking they're getting into, right? So <laughs> at least to me, even though I might be purposely deceiving these kids on, on the game, at least it's a good entryway for them to figure out, oh, I'm learning how to move and swing, and I think it's cool. And then what's really cool is when they go home 
And they're like, oh, well, you know, what'd you learn in PE? And they're like, oh, golf, we're playing golf. And the parents are like, what, really? They let you fire golf balls all around, you know? They get this idea that there's golf balls in the parking lot or, or whatever. <clears throat> and then they're like, no, 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 listen to this. Grip, stance, bow, pop, drop. And they go through the entire routine, and the parents like, "You like golf? Let's uh, let's see if we can get you signed up. Maybe you can start doing golf." And as a lifetime golfer, for me, you know, all those cool like the rules, the etiquette, just um, understanding how to treat people, being polite, and you know, just the the nature of the game itself. It, as a lifetime, lifelong sport, so many great values that these kids are going to learn from that. Um, and obviously, you know, we learned through this COVID period of time that it's just great for people to be outdoors, enjoying the beautiful scenery. I love it when I used to take my kids out and all we did was spot, you know, rabbits and squirrels. And we even went fishing at, at, at a local golf course. So, so the whole golf thing became like this fun outdoor park experience, right? Um, time? Close? 251, okay. So, questions, ideas, thoughts. Um, in a group environment, obviously, we can spit some stuff out there, and maybe it spurs a, spurs a thought or an idea for one of your, your colleagues. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the disc golf and the foot golf stuff, I think, is great. I think the element of scoring um, is cool because then they kind of keep score. And then usually what I have in my gear is I'll have, like, an actual scorecard from a, a local golf course. And I'll have them sit down after each time they've gone from box to box. And I'll have them just write it down and write their score, right? One of the double-edged sword items on that is scoring ultimately resorts in like did I win or lose did I am I better than that person and how did I do and that's just a great opportunity for golf because kind of like what cross country teaches you to just kind of run the course and do it at your own pace and you know if you're doing it on your own you feel like there's satisfaction in completing the course golf you can complete the course you can play in their satisfaction once you start introducing that competition element you know, it weeds out certain people or certain kids or players. They just don't like that competition side of it. But that's where golf is really cool because you can say, look, you're not playing against people. You're playing against the course. You're playing against your own personal best, your own personal, like with running your time, with golf it's your score. And if you started in a field like this and you started running a series, to, you know, uh, of, of golf, in a, in a section and you said okay we're going to set up the exact same course out in the field with our boxes our sabers our soccer balls and at you know day one you're going to write your score down and every time we play this you'll write your score down and we'll see by the end of it if you've improved and inevitably they will because they'll realize gosh every time i came up to the jungle gym and the sandbox that that's an obstacle course i got how do i get around that so they start thinking strategically and and they're just having fun with it. And you can do that. You can actually send them out as singles so that they're not hitting each other. And you can kind of monitor the whole thing, monitor the field, and send them out like tee times. Okay, there you go. You know, you're going to play. Or what I like to do is like a scramble where you send them all out to a hole. And then you just say, well, you don't get to hit from your hole until that person is out of that hole. So you set up 10 boxes for nine holes or whatever it is that you want to do. And then you've always got like an open hole. And you say, okay, keep score. And you might even shout out from the field, okay, who got, wh what scores you get? You got a 10, 12, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's just a fun way to do that. So um, any other questions, thoughts? What do you think? What do you, what do you think? Like it? Thumbs up? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, I've got the products, I've got access to some of the stuff I can help get you those resources and help get you connected with those people. But again, you have a lot of this stuff, so you don't need to necessarily go get a whole bunch of things. You just look through your storage and you've got a lot of this stuff that you can use. 
Um, again, like the, my final thing is just like if, if I'm trying to grow the game of golf and it's my industry and I'm passionate about it and I want more golfers out there playing, I want all of you out there playing. Next time you go to Top Golf, you know, maybe your, your swing has improved even just based on what we were doing here. Um, because that just means golf is becoming cooler and more fun and more people are learning, oh, it's not this exclusive, like, weird game that I need to go buy $150 shoes and then why do I need to wear a collared shirt and, you know, stuff like that. There's a lot of that that's kind of changing in the golf industry, which I think is cool. Uh, Top Golf has done a, a really good uh, job of doing that kind of stuff. So um, thank you. Thanks for letting me come. Yeah.